which you'll see on our website, you can go, it's about halfway down the page on the website, you'll see there's a big kind of a, a picture that you can click on that will talk about the <coughs> facilities. And within that facility webpage that will pop up, there's a live webcam that you can, that you can click on. So it's, uh, you can actually see what's going on. It's a great picture uh, that, of the construction site to see what's going on. Right now they are pouring the, I don't know if you want to call it, a, <coughs> tell about a contractor, the rim of the foundation that'll, that this facility will kind of be. So it's actually starting to get a little bit defined. And March 8th, 9th, 10th, that time frame, that week, you'll actually start to see walls going up in the air, uh, which is often nice to see. They've done a lot of work, a lot of, you know, a lot of the footings and the foundation work, a lot of the stuff that you're not going to see, but it's the basis for any building or home. You want to make sure you've got a good, solid foundation. So they've actually also started some work on the inside of the dome as well. What we're going to have to do when this thing connects to the dome, there'll be three large windows that are on that south end below the scoreboard that will overlook the dome. So as they start to cut those in, what they're building right now is the steel beam infrastructure to shore up that wall and take the load uh, that will be created when you penetrate that wall. So they're starting that process. So if you get to a game, if you get to the game this week and you're gonna see on that south end, uh, we have a construction fence kind of set up along that perimeter of the, the south wall. They've already taken down some of the, 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 the cinder block uh, on that wall and behind that cinder block was insulation then you have the precast panels which you see on the outside of the dome and they'll start that process they actually have to move some some utility lines on and move those a little bit more north and then they'll dig they'll cover those up and then they'll actually start digging on the base of the wall and start to develop or build or form the footings and have that steel structure go up so you're looking at probably around the month of may into june when we will actually be cutting through that south end of the dome wall, penetrate that wall, and start to, you'll start, really start to see the shape in the openings. Now, they've also assured me that that will be done in time for football season, at least the, the, the work that needs to get done on that side, but it continues. So in, you're probably gonna see towards the end of March, first part of April, when most of the foundation work is all done and they don't have to do any more over by the dome, that crew will go over and start uh, doing what they need to do on the track soccer complex. Uh, track soccer complex is slated to be done late September, early October. They'll turn that back over to us, and then we'll actually host the Summit League Track Outdoor Championships in May of 2016. And we will probably we will play our first competitive varsity soccer matches out there in the fall of 2016. So that that part's right around the corner. That one's uh, it's nice to see. It's nice to see actually stuff starting to come out of the ground. I think that's when you really feel like progress is being made. When they, when they had the championship game and they flew some of those parents down there, or they made an allotment for some money there, what was that? Mm -hmm. and they, how did they figure that one? It's interesting because that, that question actually came up and the individual from the NCAA who's the vice president in charge of championships found out about that after the fact. I'm not sure who made that call and who made that happen. Here's the interesting thing about that. So whatever the national championship game was for football, they flew all the parents down there in the NCAA found a way to pay for it. Individuals at the NCAA didn't even know that. Here's the interesting thing. It tells you where the priority is. So North Dakota State and Illinois State play for the national championship game in football, okay? <coughs> Illinois State requested from the NCAA an additional bus for their travel party. Some was for parents, but other just the rest of their travel party, it was denied. So instead of three buses, they only got two. Why? Because it cost too much money. That, that, that shows you, I mean, sometimes the hypocrisy, they catered to those individuals and kind of, you know, that to me was a, yeah, that's where it's getting dirty. <laughs> Robbie? You know, you were talking about funding the student athletes up above the scholarships. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what kind of time frame you're looking at, but you know damn well that North Dakota State, if Minnesota would kill his program risen from the salary to decent football. Mm -hmm. If they're going to re recruit, you know, against Minnesota, and they lose because they, you know, damn well North Dakota State's not going to. Sure. You know, I mean, if, then you got Northern mm -hmm. Illinois. So I, I think it's just not if North Dakota State's going to do it. It's just a question of time. Well, and you know what, Robbie? I think that's the same for all of us. Time and what manner. 
Because I mean, if our difference of tuition or your cost of attendance is four thousand dollars, certainly we could we could provide up to that amount. Doesn't mean we have to provide. We could provide two thousand dollars or a thousand dollars. You know, those are things that as we look forward I and mean, institutionally we look at how do we prioritize that. Because you know, Jim and I have said the same thing. It's you know, it's one thing if North Dakota State does it, we're going to have to do it. If South Dakota State does it, we're certainly going to have to do it. And then it comes down to how. I talked to some friends that are in. You know, at Kent State or Miami of Ohio or Bowling Green um, or Eastern Michigan that are ADs in those places, their presidents already came out and said they're going to do it. They have no idea how they're going to fund it, but they're going to do it. I mean, to me, that's okay. I mean, that sounds great if my president says we're going to do it. I'm going to look for him to sign the check to say, yes, we can do it. Then he'll turn around and look at me and say, well, you just have to figure it out. <laughs> um, and I certainly don't want it, I don't think we should do this in a manner that also eliminates sports. Now, I've heard some individuals talk, well, we could do this, but we'd have to cut sports, or you'd have to cut in other areas. And I don't think you should create, create opportunities by eliminating opportunities either. But it's one that campus-wide that we're looking on. We, we, we've got to determine how, how we do this for our campus. So those colleges that are gonna do that next year, mm -hmm. are they gonna pay those kids cash? What happens is it goes on their account. So there could, yeah, in essence, it could be cash. It could go back into a, you know, whatever. It's, it's, just, it's a lot like us, right? So if I have a student athlete living off campus and they're on full tuition, room, and board, but they're living off campus, there's a set amount that you get for room and board that each semester, that amount, let's say it's, I'm gonna pull a number out of here, is $3,000. That $3,000 then goes in direct deposited into their account in which at that point, that's room and board is, is basically rent and food, that's what they're supposed to use that for. So in essence, do you get them cash? Yeah, you do. Is that Northwestern Union? Uh, do they still try to unionize the, the athletes or is that done? You know what, it's interesting because we haven't heard. We even talked about that at the NCAA convention. They have not made the vote public yet, even though the vote was one a year ago. And I'm not sure what they're waiting for to make that public. I really don't. And even Jim Phillips, the AD at Northwestern, doesn't know what they're waiting for. So, I mean, again, that's one that's just sitting out there. I'm not 100% sure on what their timetable is. To me, if they're waiting this long, it means certainly for the union, it wasn't, it wasn't a good vote. And it was voted down. So I don't know what they're operating under or what they're waiting for to put that out there. <coughs> 